everyone, I'm Mike Sattel, founder of Sattel Tutoring, and in this lesson, I'm going to talk about one of the most common SAT weaknesses, running out of time on the math section, specifically the hard math module, the second module that most of you are going to get into. So if you're having trouble pacing through that section, I'm going to give you tips on how to speed yourself up and maximize your score, even if you are still running out of time. Now, if you're having trouble finishing the first math module, that might involve some different tactics. The stuff in this video is still going to help you, but you probably just need to go back to basics, learn some of the fundamentals of algebra and the XY plane, memorize some formulas. That stuff will speed you up so that you can get through most of the easy and medium questions in that first module. The goal should be that you are finishing the first module with at least five minutes left to go back and check your work, or at least uh, tinker with some of those really hard questions in the first module. Then the second module, of course, is going to get harder. It's a higher density of difficult questions, more time-consuming questions, so we're going to need to pick up the pace. Let's divide uh, the hard module into two different parts. Uh, I don't want to say halves because they're not exactly even, but basically we have questions 1 through 14 and questions 15 to 22, and we're going to approach those types of questions differently. Remember that the overall math sections on the SAT are organized by difficulty, meaning the first question is usually the easiest and the last question is usually the hardest, though it's a little scattered in between. But if we're focusing on questions 1 to 14, that is where we're going to have the easy and medium questions. Yes, even in the hard module, you will have easy and medium difficulty questions. So for these, we need to be fast and efficient. We cannot get bogged down in anything before question 15. We've got to be moving really fast. Some of them might take you a couple seconds to a minute to solve. There might just be some tedious steps that you need, but you really don't want to be wondering about what to do. So for these questions, if you have memorized the formulas, memorized all the math vocabulary, you should be able to cruise through those questions without a lot of hesitation. Then when you get to question 15, that's when things are going to start to take a turn. You might even notice it right away that around question 15, maybe 16, it's going to start to get harder and we have to start worrying about trap answers as well. These questions will take more time, but we can maximize our points by skipping around. Don't be afraid to go out of order here. Basically, as soon as you see a question, you're going to determine whether it is worth your time. If it is a topic that you do not know very well, skip it and come back to it. If it's going to take you a long time, even if you know exactly how to solve it, but if you just know it's going to take you three or four minutes, skip it and come back to it. The best way to improve your score on the SAT is to get more questions right. So the more questions you can do in the time limit for this section, the higher your score is going to be, even if it means that on a few of them, you end up guessing randomly. Randomly. So that is okay. For these questions, you're still going to need all that memorization that you had to do for the uh, rest of the section, but we're also going to need to be much more clever. These are much more like puzzles, and so we're going to have to solve things in weird ways and clever ways using the calculator, using different strategies. So these are not going to be as straightforward as the earlier part of the section. They're also not going to be as straightforward as the kinds of math uh, questions that you see in school. So if you are not comfortable with solving these puzzles, then you're going to have a lot of trouble doing well on the hard module. And like I said, if we're skipping around, then maybe we can't solve every single puzzle, but you're going to be finding the ones that you have the best shot at and being able to use all your time to tinker with those. Now, whether we're talking about an easy question, medium, very, very hard, the most important thing to remember for math is we need a good step one strategy. What that means is you can't look at a question, read it, and then stare at it for a minute while you decide what to do. There are very few questions where that should ever be happening, even if it's a very confusing question. A good step one strategy you've probably heard me talk about in lots of my math videos is something like plug points into equations. If I see that a math question has points and has equations, I don't think too hard about it. I just plug the points into the equations. And what that lets you do is get started on stuff really, really fast. So for the more traditional stuff in questions 1 through 14, we don't have to worry about the specifics of the question. We're just kind of doing the same motions about plugging things in as we always do. And then for the harder ones, we at least have somewhere to start when there's other things involved in a question. The key for this is we don't need to know what step two is going to be to do step one. And a lot of time is lost by students who just stare at a question, hoping that idea pops into their head. That is a waste of time. Every second counts, and you need to be using every second to move the question forward. Even if you're not sure if what you're doing is helpful, it's probably good to be tinkering with something on your scratch paper than just staring at it blindly. The other thing we have to remember is we might not finish. 
Okay. The SAT is very hard. It is not like the kinds of tests you take in school where if you just memorize all the formulas, you should be good to go. So part of doing well on the math section is accepting the fact that you might have to randomly guess on a few questions. But you can be strategic about that. If you are skipping around and finding the questions that lend themselves to the strategies that you personally know the topics best, uh, you are going to do better. Even if it's just something that you can plug into Desmos or where you know it doesn't really take a long time, those are good questions to target. And that means, yes, you might sacrifice one or two or three really hard, tedious questions and just guess randomly, knowing you're probably gonna get them wrong, but knowing that if you spend the time to get everything else right, you can still get a 750, a 760, a 770. Figure at about 10 points a question, it's okay to sacrifice a few if it means that you've guaranteed the points elsewhere. And that's why questions one to 14 are so important. You really cannot afford to make mistakes in that grouping of questions if you are looking for a top score. You might make a mistake in 15 to 22. So we need to kind of build in the places where we're gonna maybe lose some points and make sure we are perfect on everything else. And I think that's the most important thing to remember if you are struggling with finishing these sections. You have to go in knowing that it is very likely you will run out of time and preparing for that. And then if you, by some you know stroke of luck, you end up finishing the section and having a couple minutes to check things over, great, now you can go check things over. But at least if you're mentally prepared to have to skip things, you won't panic when you see two minutes on the clock and you've got four questions left. Pick the one that you think you're gonna get right, guess B for everything else, and move on and just try to maximize your correct answers. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any other questions, please put them in the comments. I also would suggest going to my channel and looking at a few things if you're struggling with the pacing and the math. Certainly start with the strategy series that I have on the top of my channel homepage. It's really great. Learning how to plug points into equations and arithmetize and use the Desmos calculator. That will definitely speed you up. At first it might slow you down to use these new strategies that you've never used in math class before, but if you give them a chance and get comfortable with them, they will make you go faster and you will get to more questions. You also need to make sure you are comfortable with every topic that it could appear on the SAT so you're not wasting valuable seconds wondering if you remembered the formula correctly. So go to my uh, playlist on the different topics for the math section to start to memorize the vocabulary and formulas that you need. And then if you're looking for more practice, I definitely recommend becoming a channel member. You can get more information by clicking the join button on any of my videos. Channel members have access to lots of original questions that I have written and specifically for math, I have really twisted them up. I've got some great sets on geometry and statistics and percentages that really try to push the envelope of some of the hardest things that you could see on the SAT. So they're really great practice just for getting used to untwisting those questions as quickly as possible. Uh, because yes, some of them on the SAT will be really weird. And the more you can get comfortable uh, unweirding them, the faster you'll be and the more likely you'll be able to finish. Hopefully, again, this was helpful. If it was, give me a like, give me a subscribe. And I'm Mike Sattel, the founder of Sattel Tutoring. Remember when it comes to your scores, don't settle for less, so tell for more. Thanks for watching.